It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Connecticut College Assistant Women's Soccer Coach, Coach Mia Santana. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in college women's soccer? Yeah, of course. Um, so when I graduated, I grad I was a human development major and I was in the education department. So I knew I wanted to work with um, kids, but what made me go more towards coaching was my the head coach currently, he introduced me to the Southeast Soccer Club, which is what I played at when I was in high school. Um, he thought it was a great idea for me to get into coaching there. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, I started out as an assistant. I was coaching with Tom Butler um, for the 2010 boys, as well as I want to say 2008 girls. And I was assistant then. I, it was an amazing experience. I loved coaching just because one, I love soccer. I've always loved soccer. And then I got to kind of have that teaching role because coaching and teaching, I believe, go hand in hand. Um, so that's what made me want to love coaching. And then the next year, I was able to be a head coach of the 2012-2013 girls. And that was that was an amazing experience as well. Being able to go into that leadership role and taking out a team was amazing. And then towards the end of that year, I got a call from coach, from Coach Norm. And he said, hey, I have an opportunity for you. I would love for you to uh, apply for the assistant women's coaching job. And I was like, "That's that sounds amazing. I would love to do that. Just at that higher level would be so much the game would be faster. The, um, I get to see a lot, a lot of new players each year. Recruiting would be exciting. And I thought that'd be a wonderful opportunity for me. So I applied and I went through the whole in, um, interview process and I got it. So yeah, that's kind of like how I wanted to get into college coaching just because of that higher level. I already was at the the Southeast club level and I wanted to go one step higher. What was your experience like getting to play collegiate soccer for Connecticut College? Oh, it was amazing. It was such an amazing experience. Um, NESCAC is what I would argue is the best um, conference in Division Three. Um, so it's such a high level. The speed of play is so much faster. And that was one challenging, but also so motivating for me as a college athlete. Um, we got getting to play Amherst and Trinity and Wesleyan, and then even making it to the tournament two out of the four years of my college experience was absolutely amazing. I, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. How was that experience like getting to put on that soccer jersey and representing them? It was, uh, it was surreal. I would, the very first time I got to put it on was obviously my freshman year for team photos. And it just, it just felt like I was a part of something bigger just because again, the NESCAC is such a crazy competitive conference and being able to be a part of Khan, especially since I'm from New London. So I grew up knowing about Khan. I used to go there all the time when I was in high school and just knowing, being able to put on that jersey was just so surreal for me. Very cool. What were some of your biggest accomplishments as a player? I would say my biggest accomplishments was just being, becoming a better soccer player and a better person with, with, um, being on the Connecticut College soccer team throughout my four years, we had a pretty big team. So I was able to gain confidence as a player just because I had to be competitive, just because I was fighting for a roster spot. Um, so that competitiveness, that confidence just boosted, which I didn't really have in high school. And it's something I never really had to fight for because obviously at New England High, we weren't the best high school team. So I really never had to fight for a roster spot. I was just kind of always um, starting. So I think that confidence and having to fight was something that was some my biggest accomplishment and just being, being able to be a leader. I wasn't, while I wasn't a captain when I was my junior senior year, I did feel like I was able to mentor the younger grade or the younger grades um, at con. So I think that was, I would say that's the biggest accomplishment for me myself. Obviously, making it to the tournaments, that's awesome. But but yeah, myself personally, I would say is that confidence and um, being able to be there for my younger grades was great for me. Of course, about the tournaments, as a player, what was that like going to the two tournaments, going to the 2016 and 2017 NCAA tournament? Yeah, well, the fact that I had I got to go my freshman year... <laughs> That that was awesome. Um, I traveling was amazing. Getting to, um, and then getting that that the paper the what to call it, the I want to say like the name tag, whatever it's called. But getting that it was it's just so super exciting. Just being able to know that we made it to the national tournament my freshman year. We were that good. We had I believe we had ten wins that um, pushed us toward the tournament. Stepping out of that field, seeing these different types of D three colleges and players that we got to play against, um, it was awesome. I want when we 
won in PKs that first game. That was the most one of the most exciting moments of my college career, just because how it, how they all rushed to the sideline to cheer on everybody that didn't or who wasn't playing, and just the fact that we got to, we won that first game was just awesome. And then again, going back again my next year, it was it kind of felt like yeah, we're that good. We might as well continue on going next year. Um, no, it was awesome. It's a real moment. Of course, coming out of college, what was it like getting your first assistant coaching job? Yeah, it's step like I said, it was definitely very exciting. I was a little nervous um, just because. I graduated 2020, so the senior class, I actually played with them. I went to school with them. So it was definitely a, a little nerve-wracking in that sense because I knew that I needed to take on this role that I needed to be respected no longer as a player, as a teammate, but now as a coach. Um, but at the same time, it's it was I was super excited for it. I went, I started in, I want to say May. So I got to go right into the recruiting sense. So I was able to do all the camps. I traveled down to Pennsylvania to do a bunch of recruiting camps and taking on that role and being able to recruit and find players for the following years. It was so fun. So much fun. What was that feeling like when you got the call from your head coach to become the assistant coach for your alma mater? Oh, so awesome. It was awesome. I, I remember I was actually still at my old job. I was on my break and I remember getting the call and I was jumping up and down and I, I had to stay quiet because obviously, but I was super excited for it. Um, and I couldn't wait to start. I, I believe I started probably a week, two weeks after that call. And it was, I was so excited about it. I immediately told my fiance, I called my mom. I was like, yeah, I get to go back to my college. Um, no, it was awesome. What was that feeling like when you stepped back on to Connecticut College, but now as a coach? Oh, it was a, it was a cool transition. Um, I had, it was a, it was a new experience to me. I stepping on that field, what, three years ago, I was getting ready to play, but now I'm getting ready to coach. And like I always tell my recruits, it's stepping on that field and being a part of that game. It's, it's, it's an amazing experience, especially with all the fans. If you ever been to the Connecticut college um, field, you, it's kind of like a bowl, how the fans are all around you. Um, and I always joke that now I get to step on it. I don't ha- I'm not sweating. I'm not out of breath. I get to actually just coach and be super excited in that sense. Um, so it's a, it's an amazing, it was an amazing feeling. I can't wait this season. Super what, far away. Though. What has that feeling felt like, obviously, to step onto that field as a coach and on the sidelines versus from your time when you were a player playing on that same field? Right. So as a, I would say as a player, I was obviously excited to get ready to play an SCAC game or an on-conference game, but... I was also nervous just because, again, I'm. When am I going to get in the game? Am I? When am I going to get playing time? Am I going to? Um, how are we going to win? Are we going to lose? How are my teammates going to play? So that was kind of like that feeling when as a player, as a coach. I mean, I would say it's pretty pretty similar. I was nervous. I was excited, but this time, I'm thinking of are my players going to play well? Um, are we going to? Are they going to? Remember the scout? Are they going to remember the film that we watched? Or what's going to happen there? But when we every time we scored every time we did um made had a great move and we did what we were supposed to do it was still super exciting and as a coach i it's it's kind it's kind of a different feeling obviously because i want i'm so young i want to be out there but at the same time it feels great as a coach knowing that they're doing what they're supposed to do they're still having fun they're making these amazing goals and i'm there to support them and be there for them and coach them up so that we can all be successful. So yeah, it was, it's surreal month, surreal feeling. Of course, what have you took from your time as a player to help you to become a coach on the collegiate level? Um, That's a good question. I would say, especially since I went to Khan, I knew everything. I knew Norm's coaching style to a T because he coached me myself. So I think that made it a little easier coming to Khan. I knew every, how he worked, how he operated. And I knew his style of play because I played it myself. So I think that kind of translates over. And then obviously having the soccer knowledge that I had as a soccer player, it was, it translated to the game and to coaching. Um, But I did, I will say the transition, it was hard at times just because I was, I'm no longer thinking like a soccer player. I have to think as a soccer coach. So I think that transition was a little hard, but I got, I'm fairly quickly, Norm's an amazing coach, an amazing mentor, and he's helped me so much um, to learn how to say or how to coach certain things, coach a certain way so that each di- player can be successful. Because again, everyone's different. Every player is different. Every, their soccer minds are different. So you have to coach them a certain way in order for us all to be successful. So that's kind of like that transition um, is what made me successful as an assistant coach for my first year. When it comes to the culture, how have you took what you were learned by as a player from the culture to then build upon it as now a coach. 
Right. Yeah. So like I said, coming from being able to be under, um, being a player of norm, culture is super big in our, as our team, we all make sure that at the end of the day, we all come together as one. We lose, we win as a team. We also lose as a team. We get better as a team um, on and off the field. And knowing that as a player and then transitioning it to that as a coach, I've learned that it's good to um, reach out to our players, check in about school, about social life, about their home life, every, and everything just so that we can all be successful. It's not, we're coach. Yeah, we're coaches, but it's not just about soccer. So our team culture is very big in terms of we're, we all come together as one. We all get better as one. And if there's a problem, we all address it together. It's not something that there's no drama in this team. And I, when I was a player, we didn't have drama. And as a coach, I want to maintain that just because drama doesn't help any team. It makes, it doesn't make you good players. It doesn't make you good individuals either. So what does a typical game day look like for Connecticut college? So game day, I definitely want to talk about NESCAC Saturday. That's my favorite. Um, so typically we will have our team, depending on if we're home or away, when we're home, we'll have our team walk, which is something that's super important for us. We all wake up, we go down to the Arboretum, we have, we take our little walk, we talk about what's important about today. Then we'll have a team breakfast. We'll all go to Harris Dining Hall and we'll um, all fuel up for the game. And then they'll go down to the team room. They'll get ready. They're blasting music. They're going to the training room. They're all preparing for the game. While Coach and I, we prepare in the office about what we're going to say to the group. Um, if we need to readdress any scout or film that we talked about the past week, then we'll come in. We'll, again, say that part. We'll start the starting lineup. And then we'll head to the field while they're continuing their last song. And they get to walk up to the field. And then we'll obviously have our warm-up. Um, and then it's game time. Of course, what were some of your game day routines and rituals like as a player from now as a coach? I <laughs> I always joke. I like um, most players, they for Uruguay games, for example, they say that they like to stay awake before the game. Like if we're going to somewhere close, like Wesleyan or Trinity Eastern, they'll try and stay awake. I am a sleeper. I, as a player and a coach, I will take that pre-game nap to prepare me for the game ahead. Um, when I was a player for home games, music was really important to me. So when we walked up to campus, I would always listen to music and that pretty much transitioned to as a coach as well. I love music definitely pumps me up, fuels me for a game. So those are kind of like the same rituals that I do as a player and now coach. Who are some of the teams that you face each week in your conference? So in our conference, yeah, we'll um, mainly we'll play, we'll play Colby, Bates, Middlebury on the weekends, um, Bowden on the weekends, and then typically Trinity and Wesleyan are kind of like our night games. Tufts is normally on the weekends as well. Who am I missing? Amherst is normally a week at a week night game. Who am I missing? I feel like I'm always missing somebody. We have Trinity, we have Bates, Colby, Middlebury, Wesleyan, Trinity. Um, I think I got everybody. Yeah, it's <laughs> I always mess them up. But no, yeah, that's typically who we play in conference. What is it like going to Col Colby? Mm -hmm. And then what is it like having Tuff come to your facility? Yeah, so Colby, that's a far one. That's the that, that we'll have to leave Fridays. So we have our whole ritual for that. When we go up there, we'll normally stop at um for Amherst, for example, when we travel there, we stop at Trader Joe's. We'll or we'll, when we go up to Colby, when we go up to like Bowden up there in Maine, we'll stop at as a player, I remember we stopped at um, the a bunch of those big kind of like towns where all the stores are. We'll stop at a restaurant there. So we'll make sure that we are eating, refueling, getting ready to the hotel. But it's definitely far. It's definitely far. So it's a little harder. And then waking up early to go to the game. But home games, having them travel to us is, um, I, I like those more, obviously. You know, like I said, Nest Cake Saturdays are my favorite. So having them come to us is what I like more than having go up there. What has that experience been like as an assistant coach? getting to go to those same schools that you were playing against? Um, yeah. So like I said, my, I played with the scene, the, well, last year I, I played with those seniors. So when I traveled to the other teams, getting to see those facilities again, it kind of took me back to when I was a player, um, getting to able to go into those locker rooms. Um, but I was, and then even seeing some of the players that I used to play against myself, it was, kind, it was definitely kind of weird that first year. 
But going to the flip side, now that as a coach, even some of the, the coaches, they remember me like, oh, yeah, you played at Con, And now look at you as your assistant. So it's definitely that was, that was definitely a cool moment for me seeing that I'm I got to return to Con and then meet all these coaches. But now they see me as a coach. So it's a different level of respect, different level of communication. So, yeah, that's what I'll say. It was definitely different for me. What does that recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes looking to play colleges? Soccer. Yeah, so what's big, really important for Norm and I is that they come to visit campus. Um, I want to make sure they want to make sure and we want to make sure that this is the right fit for them. So whether that's a campus tour, um, they get to meet some of the teammates that come to one of our recruiting camps. That's really big in our recruiting. And then it's also us making sure that we see them, whether that's a highlight video or we go out to one of their games at a showcase at a normal league game um, that's really part of our recruiting process is just one, making sure they come to campus and two, we see them play and it's a continuous communication. We're not just, yeah, they come to campus, then we never speak again until they apply. It's just continuous communication to see that they're really interested and that we're really inter- interested. What does that official visit look like on the women's soccer side? When you say in a fit, when they come for the campus mm-hmm. the first time, typically we want them to go on a campus tour. So that's all through um, up top of admissions. We want them to see that perspective of the campus, but then also have them come to us and we tour them around the athletic center. Um, if it's in the summertime when there's no one in our team room, because we share it with lacrosse um, and basketball. But when in the summertime, if no one's there, we'll show that. We'll show our team room. We'll show the weight room. We have a varsity weight room that, um, it's just for varsity athletes, so we definitely show that. Um, we are we go down to the turf. We see what that we those are the, the games we play on the weeknights. Uh, we'll go up to campus and see the the field itself. Um, but yeah, typically we want them to have a campus tour, and then um, we show them the athletic center. And lastly, if they come during the week, we want to make sure they go to classes with some of our players so they can get that aspect as well. What is it like as a college coach to see those players go on and make those dreams of becoming an NWSL professional soccer player? Well, myself, I don't think I I haven't met anyone that's gone pro. I do know someone from Waterford who she she played at the Waterford Soccer Club and she continued on to play pro in um, that sense. But I myself hasn't met. I don't think I've met. No, I'm. I don't think so. I don't know anyone that's gone pro. Um, but if I have, I'm sure it'd be, it'd be definitely, I, I would feel super happy about it knowing that I coach somebody and then they end up continuing their dreams going pro. I think that would make me feel super happy knowing that I was a step in their process. But for now, we just have to wait. I haven't experienced that yet. So we'll see. <laughs> As an alumni and assistant coach, what is it like seeing those players put on that same uniform that you put on? Again, yeah, it's it's definitely I one, I would say I miss it. I wish I was putting on that uniform for myself. I still miss playing soccer. Um, but I kinda as a coach now, I see myself through them knowing that they're going to um be successful that just because I've had the same experiences, so I can use that when I'm coaching them. But it's stuff I miss it and it's also exciting at the same time. It has ups and downs. <laughs> what are some of your future plans for the program moving forward? See, yeah, that that's a good question. Right now I'm I'm happy where I am. I'm happy assisting and learning and getting better as a coach. But I mean, who knows? Who knows what I'll do if I remain here, I move up to uh, maybe some head coaching musician. I haven't thought of that just now. Right now I'm happy where I'm at. Of course, what advice would you give those high school athletes that are entering looking to go? play collegiate women's soccer? I would definitely say um, consistency is key. So if you're looking to go play at a collegiate level, it's definitely important to keep up with your the physical aspect, the technical aspect of soccer. Um, and then in terms of looking for the colleges that you want, again, consistency is important. So if you want to go to Con, if you want to go to Eastern, if you want to go to any, any college, it's good that you're keeping up with communication with that coach, make sure that you're making sure they're attending games, they're seeing you play, but also you're attending that campus to show that you are are uh, interested just like they're interested. So I would say consistency is key. What advice would you give those players entering their first year of collegiate soccer? Oh, I would, um, I would say in the fall, it's definitely easier um, for me anyway, I would say it's easier in the fall than it is in the spring, just because when you're in in the fall, you're on a set schedule. You go from class to um to practice for film, homework, and then sleep. But out of season is where it's the most important. Just because, especially in the NESCAC, we're we're not allowed to coach our players in the spring, so we don't see them too too much. So that's the time that 
I I noticed I struggled and other other players on my team struggled because they don't have they don't have that consistency. They don't have that set schedule. So I would say continue um, creating a schedule for yourself in the spring like you would in the fall. So come, come in thinking, knowing that you have to work, you have to um, create time for yourself, for your, your family, for soccer, but make sure you have that set schedule. Schedules are, for me, for me anyway, schedule, having a schedule is important. What advice for you of those players that are looking to play professionally and go into the NWSL? I would say constant constant practice is important um while not only are you obviously you have your college team and you're you're working with them and you're getting better there but also you need to have set aside time to get better to your for your individual skills um so constant practice is important in the fall in the summer in the spring winter you're constantly working to get to reach those goals so it's not just you go to practice then you're done for the day you're at you're at you're in your dorm room, you taking get in touches, you're juggling, you're at your home field in the summer, you're getting better individually so that you can reach that goal one day if you'd like. What advice would you have those college soccer players looking to get into college coaching right after college? <laughs> um, I would say experience, definitely experience. I was able to have the opportunity to work at the Southeast Soccer Club, like I said in the beginning. So I was able to gain experience in coaching and learn from other um, mem- mentors that it, of those head coaches at Southeast um, in order to gain the experience, the knowledge of coaching, of different coaching styles, what my coaching style was, for example. Um, so I would say experience is definitely important, whether that um, be coaching camps like I did my, during my college years, or again, trying to find a club team to coach, a high school team to coach at home, whatever it may be. But I think experience is definitely important. What advice would you give people looking to coach at their alma mater? What advice would you give for to coach at your alma mater? Is that what you said? Oh, okay. Again, yeah. I mean, it's definitely good to have a good experience with the head coach, obviously, if you want to go, go return back to your alma mater. So uh, make sure that ex- that relationship is good. Again, experience is important. So you don't want to just get thrown into an assisting job because you need to know you need to know about coaching. You need to know about the lifestyle of a coach as a pl- and a player as well because you will be coaching those individuals. And then, lastly, again, it's just good relationships. Good relationships with your the head coach. Good relationships with people in the athletic department. Um, I think that's what really helped me, just because I knew everybody. So and I had good relationships with them because as a college player, when I went to Con, I made. I made sure I was just a good athlete, a good, a good person. And I had those relationships with the athletic director, the other coaches, um, and everybody on campus, I would say. <laughs> That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Connecticut College women's soccer program at i uh, you can find I mean, typically I don't share my social media if that's but I I definitely I'm I run the Connecticut College the Coco Woso Instagram page, Facebook page, Twitter page. So I post about everything about um the camels and myself whenever needed we do so yeah it's not typically just about our team sometimes we will post that hey norm and me are fishing with the team sometime or we also go or we're eating at this restaurant sometime we're eat at this recruiting camp but yeah typically i don't share my social media that's that's all right with you thank you again coach mia santos for your interview and best of luck in your future with the connecticut college as an assistant women's soccer coach. Thank you so much for having me. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Mia, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Yes, thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.